Welcome back to this slightly odd looking episode of the Electronics Inside. If you've not seen one of the previous episodes where I've done a camera, you'll know that's because I like to demo them. And better still, this is the live preview. And even better, Wow, that's really close. That's right, optical zoom, remotely controlled from a phone. How cool. But seriously, how cool is this? But there are more features to the Sony QX10. Let's get into it. So this tiny little device is actually the Sony QX10, which I think you would describe as maybe a mirrorless camera. Uh, maybe you would describe it as not a camera, as a phone accessory. It's a bit of a strange one. Sony did a few of these and they all came out around 2012, 2013. And they were designed to, using NFC, as you can see on the top, sort of pair with your phone. And this little clampy bit sort of spring mounts onto your phone. And then you can pair these and they communicate using uh, direct Wi-Fi. And you can use this like it's a proper camera. I mean, it works pretty well. And like I say, the optical zoom, which is a little bit hard to control, but looks amazing. Um, to put this into context, I took this with me to an air show that was nearby me a few weeks ago. And I took some photos on my Pixel 3a, I'm aware it's an old phone at the moment, my wife's Sony Xperia 10V, I think, don't quote me on that, which has got three optical zooms on it, and some photo and video using the QX10. And it worked really nicely. See inserts of gratuitous flybys here. So not only can you use this on your phone like it's a big camera, but because of the Wi-Fi, you can use your phone as a remote viewer and or a remote shutter or remote controls to actually take photos of a group or yourself, like I've just done in a sort of vlogging type scenario. This actually has a little quick release, so you can leave the clip on your phone and detach it and stand it somewhere to take a photo. That's really good forethought. Um, it's got a micro SD, but also takes the Sony M2 memory card. Pretty sure I mention this every time. Why did Sony think people wanted a bespoke format for storage? NFC pairing, 10 times optical zoom, micro USB, which you can do file transfer over, although you can browse and transfer the files over your phone as well. At full resolution, or you can choose to do previews, which so when you click the shutter, you get like a 10 second preview of the photo you've taken and a low resolution. On camera buttons, so if you're feeling brave without a viewfinder, you can hold it out and take photos in strange and unusual places. No flash, which I get, I don't think I miss, but would have been an awesome feature for some anyway. All in all, it's a really cool little device. It just has this one tiny little screen on the side, which I think shows battery count and like a power status, not a lot to it. But with the paired app, this thing's awesome. I have to admit, I'd never seen one of these in the flesh until I got it to do this tear down. And I couldn't resist turning it on and trying to use it first. And so far I've been really impressed, but I bought it to take it apart. So let's get into it. So let's get rid of that straight away. We'll get back off with interchangeable battery. 
how lovely. Got details of the wireless. I, I don't think I actually needed that. I think I paired this over NFC, so I just tapped my phone on the top and it provided the Wi-Fi details. And in app, you can choose between different cameras. So at the bottom, I've got a micro SD card. And then I have to work out how to open the rest of this up. Uh, I will say these weren't cheap when they came out. I think they were around about £400, which at the time in 2013, a phone was probably £500 and it had a not terrible camera on it. Admittedly, fixed zoom, fixed length. Uh, it, it was quite a tough proposition to sell. But the fact that mobile phones have now moved on to the point where they all have various lenses and camera sensors to achieve a similar zoom effect means that there was probably some kind of market for this, right? Oh, uh, if it wasn't obvious, this big thread at the bottom, I can't remember exactly what type or size thread that is, but that's the standard size for a lot of camera accessories. So that just mounted straight on my tripod. Okay, first off the little bottom. So this little bit off the bottom is what stops it rocking. Obviously, if this was completely cylindrical, it would just roll and you'd never get a good photo. As always, this is Sony. I have high expectations for the number of screws I'm going to get out of it. This does feature optical image stabilization, which I don't think many phones had in 2013. I'm pretty sure high-end DSLRs and things like that did but not phones, which this was sort of trying to fill the gap of. It's an interesting product. It's not a camera in itself. It's not really a phone better than a phone, but works with a phone. I can see why they probably had issues marketing this. I will also say, having just watched the transferred video of the introduction I shot using this, it actually sounded not bad, as in the, the microphones were decent. And I've got two slots at the top. I don't know whether that's actually a stereo microphone, but it sounded better than a lot of cameras do. That's the display, which I haven't really thought of, but it's actually got a slightly curved lens, so it complies with the outside of the case. And it looks like the lens has sort of got this self or double-sided, yeah, double-sided tape on the outside, so it's just sort of stuck in there. Given the fact this is Sony, I, I'm kind of willing to accept double-sided tape as a good option. Okay, and true to form, they have used metal where they've got physical buttons. Uh, it'll be something like a tactile dome in there, or actually a tactile switch. And wow, a tiny little lever switch for the zoom controls. There we go, everything released. So on that loom, we had shutter, zoom, microphone, microphone, power switch, LED, and somewhere in here, oh, that's right. So this bit's the NFC antenna coil. So one of the microphones, took its gasket out and the other one left it in there. That's fine, so long as I can account for it. Just take them both off so I know where both are. Vibration isolation around microphones is important because if you think that sound is just movement and vibrations, every time you tapped the case, that would transmit a lot of noise back into the microphones if you didn't isolate them somehow. So flexible mounts for microphones, please. One thing I had never considered but I'm now really interested to find out. Did Sony hijack the optical assembly? So the, the motors, the focus, the optical image stabilization, the sensor, out of another device and just slap an extra or different control board on the back of this. Those Sony manufacturing wizards. So next to each of the screw holes in this metal assembly piece, there's a little dimple on this part, which corresponds with a dent in there. So even after you've put the screws in, there's still a piece of metal with a detent that's holding this all together. And similarly, if I get to reassemble this, I'll be able to push that in and it'll clip in place while I position the screws. Beautiful attention to detail. And of course the battery terminals, which are here on this plastic, actually just slide over the printed circuit board. They're not soldered on which means you can actually assemble this, clip it in and insert the cable on the back and still have a screw just here to hold it all together. <sighs> this is such a nice product and it was probably worth every penny. So first look at an IC. This is an SEC K582G2 GQCN. I would definitely be having to look up what that is. Little bit that might be what reveals to us whether this is used somewhere else because that image that's likely to be oh actually it's gonna have some pretty dedicated kit on it because that's got to drive the wi-fi the operating system or the firmware 
of course, connection to the sensor, connection to the optical assembly. I can now remove the screen because that's on a connector. So these would have been pretty repairable as well if there had been enough spares floating about. But all of this is just wonderfully made. The only thing that's not on a connector is this tiny little speaker. Okay. So that's the sensor and the optics. And this is everything else, frankly. Even the micro USB port has actually got a separate metal bracket holding it down. Because, of course, that's going to be the part that will fail. That's the part that you're ramming a plug in and out of to charge this thing or to get photos off of. So the fact they've put that in a separate bracket to reinforce it, just lovely. There you go, exposed board. We've got a couple of ICs on here. Big one, a couple of little ones. Haven't seen a Wi-Fi antenna. Well, that one at the top, because these are all pretty well caged as well. Uh, the one at the top up here, I said NFC sensor, and that is where it tells you on the case to tap for NFC. But well, I would think it would be fairly sensible to have the Wi-Fi antennas out there as well, just for benefit of signal strength. Having a PCB-based uh, PCB antenna on here is going to be absolutely worthless. So inside this optical assembly, you've got zoom, focus, sensor, optical image stabilization. If you want to see in detail any of those, you can go check out the other videos. I would recommend the Sony Alpha, which is gonna be a very similar process for optical image stabilization. Uh, I also did an extra feature, which I think only ended on the Element 14 community, where we took apart all the optics from the lenses on that. Uh, we've also done uh, bridge cameras, we've done uh, the floppy disk cameras, we've done uh, a Sony video camera from the 90s, uh, a Hi8 video camera. All of those are going to be so similar to these optics, which I feel like taking these apart at this point is just gratuitous and is not going to teach us anything we didn't already know. What's interesting about this device is how they package this and what these are. So that's where I'm going to spend my time focusing. In a surprise to perhaps nobody but me, I have failed miserably to find much in way of data sheets for the ICs on here. So I think at this time, you're kind of at the tail end of point and shoot cameras. And at that point, system on a chips, as we saw in some of the other cameras we've taken apart, had become capable of communicating directly with the, the optics, the sensors. So it wouldn't surprise me if this was very similar to one that had come off of there. So I think this I see up here is mostly the Wi-Fi controller, or probably Wi-Fi and NFC on a chip. Makes sense that the wireless peripherals can be integrated onto a single chip, and they're quite near to where I think the antenna was as well, on this ribbon connector up here. This one down here, with its location right next to the storage medium, I think is going to be a storage controller. So that'll be M2 and micro SD card. On the back, we've got a couple, they could be buffers, they could be RAM, they could be packaged ICs doing pretty much anything from low level NAND gate to helping drive the motor on the optic assembly because I, I can't see any sort of MOSFETs or gates or anything on here. So they're probably packaged into an IC somewhere else. Interestingly, I don't think I'd ever thought of this as a point and shoot camera without the screen until I said it just now. And it's weird that at this point in 2013, when phones were becoming so competent and capable, that the point and shoot camera market was well and truly in decline. And yeah, it makes sense that turning them into a phone accessory makes a lot of sense. For this particular product, I think cost was prohibitive and that's why they never took off as a product that is still manufactured today which I think is a real shame because the ability to have this with the optical zoom and a few extra features, which still realistically fits in your pocket, whereas a DSLR definitely didn't and still doesn't, would really appeal to me. Certainly the zoom, if nothing else. The software is missing a few features. It'd be nice to have more manual control over things like the exposure and the shutter and the aperture and things like that. I appreciate for the casual photographer it's less of an issue. I would really like to see what this product would look like if it was released today. 
If you think of how competent onboard phone sensors are getting, imagine what they would be like if you could have an actual optic array on the front of that as well. I think, I think that's my takeaway. Awesome product, definitely from 2013. Would love to see a modern one. If you have an idea for a teardown or something you'd like to see, head over to the Element 14 community. Reach out to me over there. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.